Hello friends, welcome to our channel Mechanical Motivator. In this video, we will be seeing multiple choice question on balancing of rotating masses part 2 from dynamics of machines. So now we are going to see a few MCQ on balancing of rotating masses by a single by a single mass by two masses rotating in different plane so previously we saw few mcq right so we will be seeing the remaining continuation of those so first question is let the disturbing mass so mass will be 50 kg radius will be 0.1 meter and uh, what they will be telling us if one of the balancing mass is 30 kg at a radius of rotation 0.1 meter then we need to find the other balancing mass situated at a distance of 0.2 meter. So formula will be MR is equal to M1 R1 plus M2 R2. They have clearly given the disturbing mass. So disturbing mass will be uh, 50 kg, right? So disturbing mass is 50 kg. So we can substitute 50 for M and radius is 0.1. So R is equal to 0.1 M1. So M1 is, so one of the rotating mass M1 will be 30 kg and R1 is 0.1 and M2 we need to determine and R2 is 0.2. So from this, from this equation only M2 is unknown. So if you calculate means you will be getting a, val a value of M2 is equal to 10 kg. Second question is a single mass defect need to be balanced by a single balancing mass. It is not mandated that it has to be balanced by single mass alone because we have saw several cases, right? So totally there are four cases. So a single mass defect lying on a single plane can be countered with the help of different masses lying on different planes with the defective mass either being at the center or to the either side of it. So we have clearly saw these things in case two itself. So answer would be false. In a system, two masses are used to balance the unbalanced force. So they have given a, clearly the this is a pro analytical type question. So find the mass of the balancing mass which has to be situated at the center of 20 centimeter. So in this, we need to determine the balancing mass and they have given the radius of it. Right. So uh, uh, let, let us assume that uh, balancing mass which we need to find is M2. So R2 will be 20 centimeters. So they have given in centimeter, right? So just convert into meter. So 20 into 10 power minus 2. The disturbing, disturbing mass is 100 kg having a radius of rotation 0.1. So here we are having the formula, right? So MR is equal to M1 R1 plus M2 R2. Let M be 100 and R will be 0.1 and M1 will be 30 kg and R1 will be 10 centimeters. So 10 centimeters, 10 into 10 power minus 2. And M2 we need to determine. They are asking us to find the mass alone. Uh, for that particular mass, we are having a radius as 20 centimeters. So R2 will be uh, 20 into 10 power minus 2. So we will be getting an answer of mass M2 as um, 35 kg. So we will be getting the mass as 35 kg. So in this question, they have clearly given that uh, uh, it will be having a mass. So they have given the diagram. Uh, in this diagram, your single mass is at the center and it is balanced with two masses and they have clearly given the values, uh, length, all the values in the given data. And in this only L2 is the unknown. Okay. They have given the value of L, they have given the value of L1 and they have also given the value of M, M1 and M2 and all. So only unknown is L2 is the unknown. So the, so M1, so M1 is 20 kg, right? So M1 fourth question right so m1 is 20 kg and uh, m2 is 30 kg yeah and m will be 50 kg and um, if r1 is 0.2 and r is equal to 0.3 and l they have given us one meter and you need to find the uh, l2 alone so formula for this is m1 r1 l equal to m r l2 once again i repeat so formula for this is m1 R1 L. So M1 20 kg, R1 they have given 0.2 and L they have given 1 equal to M R L2. So M is 50 kg and R is 0.3 and L2 we need to determine if you substitute means you will be getting 0 0.26. Once again I repeat the formula M1 R1 L equal to M R L2. In next problem, so same diagram, but the values alone they have changed. 
so they have given, changed the values of m1 as 10 kg and m2 30 kg only the values they changed formula is same and in this question also we need to determine the l2 alone so formula is m1 r1 l equal to m r l2 so m1 is 10 kg r1 is 0.2 l is 1 meter and uh, m is 50 kg and r is 0.3 meter and l2 we need to determine so if you substitute all the values means you will be getting l l2 is equal to 0.13 meter so same problem uh, here also but the only thing is in previous problem we were determining the l2 right but here we need to determine r1 so what is it with the basic difference between previous and this problem is pre previous problem we determined l2 and in this problem we going to determine r1 so formula is same m1 r1 l equal to m r l2 so m is 10 kg r1 we need to determine l is 1 meter and m is 50 kg and uh, r is 0.3 they have given and l2 is 0.5 so if you substitute means you will be getting r1 is equal to 0.75 unbalanced mass leads to vibration so it's obviously true right so automatically what happens uh, the main aim of us to uh, either to completely balance or to partially balance the rotating masses so the unbalanced forces increase the load on the bearings and stresses in the various members as well as they also produce unpleasant and even dangerous vibration so answer is true and eighth question is which of the following statement is correct so in this we need to uh, we can directly say that is uh, uh, if you read all the three statements the thing is we can directly go for dynamic balancing for multi mass rotating system so so if they are given the multi mass rotating system means without going for static we can directly go to dynamic uh, balancing so that's what in case of balancing of multi mass rotating system dynamic balancing can directly start at without static balancing so for multi multi mass rotating system we can go for dynamic balancing instead of static balancing so next problem is this is the problem usually you would have done uh, your uh, done both by analytical and graphical method but in uh, mcq type questions they will be uh, giving only the four options so you need to know few formulas so these are the data so m1 m2 m3 m4 and respective radius they have given and also respective angle also they have given so you know you, you know very well right so since they have given 45 70 and uh, 135 when you are uh, plotting the diagram the first initial will be 45 and next is 75 means you have to add so 45 plus 75 whatever values you are getting you have to write like that so like that you will be getting 4 theta theta 1 theta 2 theta 3 theta 4 if you have any doubt means you just refer the videos which i had made for rotating masses balancing of rotating masses so here what they are asking is we need to find the balancing mass so how much mass is need required for balancing and they are given the radius for that so formula will be uh, summation of horizontal forces so summation of horizontal forces is mr cos theta so you can write as m1 r1 cos theta 1 m2 r plus m2 r2 cos theta 2 plus m3 r3 cos theta 3 plus m4 r4 cos theta 4 if you substitute all the mass radius and theta value you will be getting an answer as 21.6 kg meter summation of vertical forces is mr sin theta so m1 r1 sin theta 1 plus m2 r2 sin theta 2 plus m3 r3 sin theta 3 plus m4 r4 sin theta 4 if you substitute all the values of mass radius of rotation and theta means you will be getting 8.5 kg meter next thing we need to determine resultant the formula for determining resultant is kindly make a note of it r is equal to root of summation of horizontal forces square plus summation of vertical forces square these formulas also i clearly explained in the video so if you have any doubt means just go back to that videos which i have put in previous so finally if you substitute form for substitute values you will be getting 23.2 kg meter as a resultant so we know that the resultant is equal to mr so r value we know so r value is 23.2 is equal to mr m value we won't be knowing and small r they have clearly given us 0.2 in the question so if you substitute means you will be getting the mass as 116 kg the same problem we also solved both graphically and analytically so answer is 116 graphical methods gives so next question is graphical methods gives a best result 
actually i won't agree with this the reason is in order to find the balancing masses analytical and graphical approach can be used analytical analytical method gives the accurate result as there is less scope of error so graphical method won't be giving best result so answer is false so same similar question whatever we saw previously same question uh, the thing is uh, previous question we determined the mass as 116 kg and in this question we need to determine the how much angle that balancing mass is uh, kept that's it so we know the formula right so these thing i have explained clearly in previous uh, question so directly come to theta so here we can write as just make a note of it tan theta not theta tan theta equal to summation of vertical divided by summation of horizontal so if you take tan other other side means theta is equal to tan inverse of summation of vertical by summation of horizontal so finally you will be getting a value as 21.48 21.48 degree uh, we know clearly that we are uh, we will be plotting i mean we will be representing the angular position in anti clockwise direction so there there is already one there is already 180 degree will be covered and remaining is 21.48 so we need to add one that uh, 21.48 with 180 because we are considering anti clockwise and in half half of it there will be 180 degree right so you have to add that 180 plus whatever answer you got the answer you got is 21.48 just add with the 180 so totally you will be getting 201.48 degree so first a option is correct so next is uh, if and masses are in one plane then what is the maximum number of masses which can be placed in the same plane so obviously you know very well right so while balancing in one plane any number of masses can be placed the net result will only depends on the sum of the vertical and horizontal component and the resultant should be equal to the unbalanced so there is no there is nothing and there is no limitation for adding the masses option is d if the rotating speed of the shaft increases then balancing mass will also increase actually it's false no uh, nothing i mean uh, no such uh, evidence that it has to increase like that the thing is the balancing masses balancing masses to be placed in the same plane as the other and unbalanced masses is independent mark a word independent of the speed at which the shaft rotates hence there is no need for it to increase so answer is false if all the masses are in one plane then in which of the following condition it is possible so just imagine all the masses are in one plane which of the uh, following condition is possible they are asking the thing is while balancing while balancing in one plane there is no restriction of placing the masses placing of masses the net result will only depend on vector sum of the vertical and horizontal component and the resultant should be equal to the unbalanced this is what we saw right so automatically there is no there is no there is no limitations for it so no issues so 15 question is uh, yeah uh just uh, have a uh, have a, a glance of it uh, i'll just tell the concept alone so we know very well right so because it's a waste of time for reading the question again so just have a glance of it the concept around i will explain we know very well secondary forces will be equal to primary forces so fs fs means secondary force fp means primary force so fs is equal to fp therefore in order to balance the force primary force should contain an equivalent an equivalent crank radius of r square divided by 4l and rotating at twice the speed of the engine so answer will be a the next is the effect of hammer blow in a locomotive can be reduced by first of all we need to uh, we need to know what is the uh, basic things these uh, these concept actually they will be coming in reciprocating masses only but in here uh, normally what happens is uh, we need to place that is uh, uh, we need to if the if want if you, the effect of hammer blow in locomotive can only it can only be reduced by decreasing the speed and using two or three pairs of wheel coupled together so if we decrease the speed and if you use two or three pair only uh, it can be reduced that is hammer blow next question is uh, the which of the following statements are associated with complete dynamic balancing so what is the requirement for complete dynamic balancing you know very well right 
so support reactions due to the forces and couple both need to be zero so resultant couple so first resultant couple due to inertia forces must be zero the system is automatically statically balanced statically uh, statically balanced means summation of forces will be zero and the center of mass of the system lies on the axis of rotation so at that case only the system will be in balance so answer will be 1 3 and 4 which of the following statement is correct about balancing of mechanical system so in this uh, we can uh, we can very well know for complete ba complete balancing means we have to balance both static as well as dynamic both things should be balanced so both static and as well as dynamic balance have to be achieved separately so then only we can uh, say that your system to be completely balanced so here uh, the magnitude yeah the the magnitude of swaying couple due to the partial balance of primary ba unbalancing force in the locomotive wheels so first of all we need to know what is uh, swaying couple and what are the tractive forces then only we can have a clear understanding right so here we can go we can say like uh, the resultant unbalanced forces due to the cylinders along the line of strokes so this is called as a tractive force we call it as tractive force the couple has a swaying effect the couple where is it yeah the couple has a swaying effect about a vertical axis and tend to sway the engine alternatively in clockwise and anti clockwise direction and hence this couple is called as a swaying couple so these are the basic concepts of tractive force and swaying couple so this can be possible only when it if it's uh, directly proportional to the distance between the center lines of the two cylinder then only it can sway alternatively in clockwise and anti clockwise direction in a locomotive the ratio of connecting rod length to the crank radius is kept very large in order to basically uh, basically they have kept very large is the ratio is kept large to avoid or minimize the secondary forces for each balancing so if not means what happens there would be uh, more unbalance and unpleasant vibrations will be involved so next is uh, uh, in case of partial balancing of locomotives the maximum magnitude of unbalanced force perpendicular to the line of stroke is called hammer blow so hammer blow definition of hammer blow have a mark of it uh, and this has to be limited by proper choice of balancing mass and its radial position so first of all we need to know what what's the effect of hammer effect hammer blow the effect of hammer blow is to cause variation in pressure between the wheel and the rail and it may sometimes cause the lifting of wheels from the rails hence the answer will be true whatever statement they have given it's correct only a uh, multi cylinder next question will be saying multi cylinder engines are desirable because so why they are desirable so multi cylinder engines are basically desirable because both the balancing problem and flywheel size is reduced to a greater extent and hence option c is correct when the primary when the primary direct crank of the reciprocating engine makes an angle theta with a line of stroke then Oh. yeah line of stroke then the secondary direct crank will make an angle what angle it makes with the line of stroke so this is the thing they are asking uh, first of all we need to know secondary uh, direct crank angle is always twice the primary crank angle so that's so this is the basic concept secondary direct crank angle is always twice the primary crank angle so hence since it's theta we will be having two theta if it's two theta means we'll be having four theta so answer is c the secondary forces and reciprocating masses of an engine frame uh, are normally they are twice the frequency of primary forces so what happens is uh, uh, always the frequency of secondary forces will be twice the frequency of primary forces so answer would be b uh, i hope so all the concepts are very clear in case if you have any doubt means you type in the comment section and if you want me if you want me to make a video on your mcq of particular subject or particular topic means you type in the comment section so that i will make uh, videos on those topic in upcoming days and please do subscribe to my channel mechanical motivator and press the bell icon then only you will be getting all the videos which i upload and try to share the videos of mcq with your friends so that they would they would also be getting benefited
Thanks for watching this video. Have a great day.